going on, guys? How's everybody doing tonight? Hopefully, everybody's doing well. Uh, wasn't planning on doing this live, but I want to answer this question. I want to make it quick, and I just sent my man, Love and Freedom, the link if he wants to come on while I'm on. But uh, I want to cover this real quick because it's a very interesting topic that a lot of people are not aware of, which is uh, the, the VA screw me and the service organization, because you got to understand most of you guys who go to company paying office, who do you see in the office staying there rent free? DAV and some of the other sort of service organization. Okay. So how am I getting screwed when I apply for TDIU? Well, for those of you who are on TDIU, and then I'm going to speak to those of you who are not, those of you who are scheduler, who've gotten extra disabilities, and I'm going to show you where you can find this information. So when you first apply for TDIU, for a lot of you guys, you basically apply with what you have for disabilities, right? So in other words, I'm going to give you some clear examples. Let's say, for example, you're getting ready to apply for TDIU. You have 70% for depression, 40% for your back, 20% for a knee, 20% for a foot. Okay? Y'all follow me, right? 70, 40, 20, 20. You get ready to apply for TDIU. What normally happens when you apply for TDIU? They'll list every disability that you have when you apply for TDIU, right? The VA and, and DAV and the rest of these or service organizations, no, you don't have to do that. You only need to list what qualifies you for the disability, not every single disability. So the 70% is all that they needed, but they won't do that. Most raters are taught to add every single disability. Now, why would they do that when they add you TDI, when they give you TDIU? They're doing that so you don't qualify for SMCS. They don't want you to get that extra $325 or $330 a month because they know the majority of veterans who are applying for TDIU have extra disabilities outside of that one that qualify or those two that qualify that will give them that extra 300 and some dollars on top of the 100%. The service organizations know this, but they still allow the VA to screw you guys every single time. Now, for those of you who have already had TDIU and for those of you who are 100% scheduler, Let's say that you recently got awarded another benefit, 60% or higher. You can still go get SMCS. It's not too late to go get SMCS. It's still owed to you. Now, the, the craziest thing about this is it's on the VA's own website. Let me show you guys what I'm talking about real quick. Because they're never going to tell you. This is how these service organizations that you know is living rent free in the VA building, the government building. They're not really helping y'all. Not really. They're trying to screw you as much as they can. You guys see this? This is on the VA's own website. You see this court case here? It's called Bradley versus Peak. If you guys put this in at the VA's website, U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, is right here in black and white. This explains verbatim how the VA only needs a single or, or two, dis whatever your qualifying disabilities are, they don't need all the extra that they'll throw in there to keep you guys from getting the benefits you deserve. I don't have to make this up. This is on their own website. Go type in Bradley versus Peak, and you will clearly see how the VA has screwed veterans for years out of that extra benefit of SMCS. And even those of you who've had your rating for a while, some of you all are still getting ratings, even though you're 100%. You're like, well, why the hell would it give me anything else? I'm already 100. What good is them giving me 50% more is going to do? Or giving me 70% more is going to do? It's going to put more money in your pocket for you and your family. That's what it's going to do. But most people are not aware of that. Most of you guys don't even have a clue, not even aware of it. This is how you get screwed constantly. I can guarantee you somebody on here right now has TDIU. 
and they only needed one thing they probably had of all the disabilities that they listed to get TDIU. But the Raider is taught, put everything on there. So that way they can't go back and add, they get 20% later, they can't add it to this so they can get that extra 300 and some dollars a month. So I'm telling you all this to be careful. For those of you who are getting ready to file, for those of you who know someone is getting ready to file, you don't need to list everything because you're going to screw yourself. You're going to screw yourself. You only need to put down what you need to qualify. That's it. That is it. Throwing in the extra 20, what the hell is that going to do? Think about it. If you're already 70% for depression, what is throwing your foot in there at 20% going to do for you? That ain't going to help you a bit. Or throwing your knee in at 10% going to do for you? Nothing. They're doing that to future proof that you do not get that extra benefit. And the saddest part about it is most veterans don't even realize that they owe that extra benefit. For all of you that's gotten TDIU and you had a mountain of deferments and you're like, man, I got TDIU plus I got another 80% on top of that. That's 300 some dollars every month they let go by because they're unaware they're entitled to that benefit. Now I'm gonna put this up again to show you guys Bradley versus Peak. This is all public information. I'm not telling you something that's a secret. I'm not telling you something that other people have not talked about before. The difference is though, the government as well as the service organizations are never gonna tell you this because they don't want you to have it. Here it is right here from the VA's website. Please go look this up if you plan on filing for TDIU or if you have TDIU already, but then you got other disabilities added on to that, you're letting money go by you every day or every month, okay? Bradley versus Peak. Matter of fact, you can just Google Bradley versus Peak. If you go Google Bradley versus Peak, there is a ton of cases that are going to come up, dated all the way up to today, I'm sorry, up to this year. In 2022, there's a case right now before an appellate court for this very thing. Go back to last year. There's tons of them that have been granted that award because the VA fails to give it to them. And they know they owe it to them. They're looking at your file when you go do something and they see it, but they'll never say nothing because they don't want to give it to you. Who I got on with me right now? T-Mix, what's going on? Mr. Clark, how you doing, sir? Howard, what's going on? Hey, Gary, how you doing today? All right, Team Mix, appreciate that. Mr. B, what's going on? Mr. Steele, how you doing tonight? Uh, James, what's going on? So, yeah, guys, I'm just trying to put it out there to help you guys out because there's so many of you all getting screwed right now. I had a veteran send me a letter. They found this, and they asked me about it, and I told them, yeah, it's legitimate. Go to VA's website. You can go Google Bradley versus Pete. It's all over the internet. It's all over the VA's own website. Unfortunately, they're not going to tell you. They're not really trying to help. Because if I'm trying to help you, why would I screw you while I'm helping you? That's why I tell you about these service organizations, man. I don't trust none of them. Anybody that's staying in a government building for free, they're getting something out of it. They're getting something out of it. Uh, what else we got here? Markel, I did not have a clue about that case. Yeah, they, they're getting, you, you <laughs> look, as I said before, they will put stuff in that, that it wouldn't make one difference or throwing in all these extra 10% and knowing full well, it has no bearing on your qualification. They do it to future, future proof to make sure if you do get something else, you're not gonna have enough. And that's the saddest part. When they take all those ratings and put them together and say, okay, we used all this to get you that disability. They just screwed you because they didn't need it. It's the same way, guys, when you get aid and attendance or you get any other benefit. 
A lot of you all don't know this. Say you qualify for aid and attendance, all right, SMCL. And they only needed what you had. They only needed the qualifying thing to give you aid and attendance. Again, they're going to throw everything in there. Why? Because if you got 50% or higher, you don't just get L, you get L and a half. Or if you got uh, enough to add up to 100%, you move into the next category, which is M. That's even more money. You go from 500 to 800 to 1200 to 1500. They don't want you to have it. They don't want you to have it. So I'm telling you guys, I always stress, read your award letter. Read your award letter. See what they did. And if you're getting disabilities, more ratings after you've already gotten your 100%, if your ratings right now, after that 100, add up to 60% or more, you qualify for SMCS. You need to go get it. So sad is like they got they get a bonus for not helping. I don't know if they do or not, but they definitely are screwing you. They're screwing. I can't tell you how many veterans they have screwed. Uh, your sons are balling once again. Yeah, yeah, they're they doing all right. They're doing all right. It's like, um, you know, the Warriors are going, and the Suns might be the Western Conference Final, but I'm, I'm still waiting to see if the Lakers going to turn the corner. Uh, 70 and 50 above TDIU. Okay, so I want you to understand what I'm saying. If you have TDIU already, right, and they've already, because you got to look at your award letter to see what they put with whatever you had qualifying, you can't use. So if you have, like my example, 70, which is all you needed, but they threw the 20, the 20, and the other 20 in on it, you can't use those. But anything that you get outside of what they used and is 60% or higher, you need to go down, put yourself in a claim to get SMCS because you qualify for it. You guys understand what I'm saying? You got 100 already. They gave you more disabilities. They gave you more ratings. Now it adds up to more than 60%. You need to go get your, your money. Okay? You need to go get your money. Because they're not gonna get, they're not gonna tell you. They're not gonna tell you a damn thing. Service organization, not gonna tell you a damn thing. Michael. What's going on? What's up, man? I know you're on the road, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, man, I'm just explaining this with uh TDIU. Uh because I got oh, okay. and they, they, there's people out there getting screwed left and right. And they have no idea, no clue about it. Oh so he, yeah, you know, you know they ain't gonna, they they not gonna volunteer to, to help you out. They it's a win win situation for them if they can deny you. <laughs> and that's the thing, dude. These service organizations, bro. Because I had a question right after I talked to you, and I answered the question, and they're like, the service organization sent them the letter saying, "Look what we did for you. Yeah, we screwed you." Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to help you. you. I'm like, come on, man. They living in a, they stand in a building rent free. There's no way they're not helping the government. Come on, man. Oh, wow. Them DAV, uh, God be rent free in those buildings? They ain't paying no rent in them buildings, man. Oh, watch. That's the government. <laughs> I'm trying to, bro, think about it. If you go to DAV's office right now, they can pull up your entire file. They can see everything the person is working on. Every last thing. Right. How do they get access to that? Exactly. You know what? That's a good thought, too. You know, I didn't think of that. They see every single thing. And what do they do? They'll send you a letter two weeks, three weeks before you get that decision letter saying, okay, this is what we help you get. We help you get this, we help you get this, and we help you get this. The next time we send you something, please donate to whatever, whatever. Man, please. Please. Yeah, that's that's crazy how they can have access to your file and you can't get that kind of access. <laughs> they can see every single thing that they're doing. Everything. Wow. And they're whooping you? 
Who do you know that works for the government that's gonna turn around and screw the government and help you? Who do you know? Okay. <laughs> hey, that's a good thing. That's a good question because you think about it at the VA. Why can't your own primary care write you a nexus letter or write something in your favor? Mm -mm. Too close to home. No, no, no. I don't put no faith wow. in them, doing it, bro. That's a waste of time putting faith in DAVs or whoever else. Out. No, no. They're screwing wow. you more than you. Wow. Yeah, they, they ain't going to volunteer to tell you now. Leave that. Let's see. How does it work with 100% PNT? Same way. Uh, James, if you went and if you got more disabilities after you awarded your 100% PNT, because you got to look and see what they use to grant you your 100%, right? It's in your award letter. It'll say, we, get, we granted you 100% PNT based on these disabilities, all right? But if you get disabilities outside of that 100% that add up to 60% or more, you need to go down there and file to get your SMCS. Because they're not going to tell you. They're not going to say a word. Same thing for those of you that's getting SMCL aid and attendance. They're going to tell you what they use to grant you aid and attendance. Anything that you got outside of that, that's 50% or more, you get that you're supposed to get SMC L and a half. That's 800 instead of 500. If you got something outside of that that's 100%, you jump into the M category. You're no longer in the L category. You understand what I'm saying? This is how people get screwed all the time by the VA. How these service organizations okay. know this, and they won't say a damn thing to you guys. Not, not to cut you off. Now, you just said something that I didn't even know. Uh, of course, that ain't saying too much but <laughs> listen to this you just said if you got a uh a disability by itself that's 60 that puts you in a in a l category no 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 okay no okay let's say you 100 percent already okay, okay yeah all right now i don't know what they use to grant you your 100 percent but it's in your uh -huh. order everything that they use to give you your 100 percent award right right anything outside of what they use so you get granted more disabilities anything outside of that that's 60 percent or more you qualify for smcs okay okay so uh, basically 160 uh rating is put you in the s correct but they're not going to tell you that okay so you had to apply for that? Yes, because they ain't gonna, <laughs> you think they're going to give it to you? It's like right. They're not, not going to give you a damn thing. So, no, no, they're not going to give it. They're not going to even mention it to you. They're not going to tell you nothing. They're going to act ignorant as hell. That's just like I didn't know uh, a year or so ago when I had uh, first surgery that before you come 100% and you get surgery, you had to request to be a temporary 100 percent they're not going to automatically give it to you they're not going to give you nothing even though they know you need help they're not gonna mm, mm, mm. you got to go apply they're not gonna give you a damn thing they're gonna look at you like you're crazy uh you need to go apply they're not gonna give it to you let's see i don't wow. trust some people bro a lot of times it's civilians that never serve working in those organizations that just care about the money and not the sacrifices those vets made. Of course, man, look, they looking to protect their job and do whatever their supervisors tell them because they know, I guarantee you, the majority of the people who are on TDIU had one or two disabilities that qualified them for TDIU. But what would the Raider do? He'll lump all six or seven in because they know you got more than what you need and to give you that extra 300, they're not going to do it. They're not going to do it. Yes, L and M is what? So L is the base, is the bottom line for aid and attendance, okay? That's like an extra $530. M is another category above. So the way it works is you have L through O, and then you have, what's the other one? Is it N through R2? 
there's two different levels of SMC, all right? I believe it's N through R2, and then the, the, the bottom one, the lower one, is L through O. And as your disabilities get worse and as your ratings get higher, you move along that line. So you could qualify many different ways. You don't just necessarily have to have the disability, but if you have the ratings, you can move up the line all the way up, okay? Okay, okay. Hey, I got one for you. Let me ask you questions. Like, say, for instance, if you uh, – oh, I kind of lost my thought. Um, oh, shoot, man, I had it. I, I can't even remember it now. I got distracted by it. <laughs> I, I'm sitting over here. I'm sitting over here in the passenger seat, so I got to watch the road. <laughs> okay. well, you, you concentrate on what you're going to be from Mr. Solomon real quick. You one condition at 100% or multiple conditions for SMC. Okay, I'm going to say this again. All right. First thing I'm going to tell you guys to do is go right to your award letter because I have no idea what they used in your award letter to grant you your 100%. All right. So start there first. Look at what they granted you then everything that you got outside of your 100% doesn't matter if it's one or it's 20, as long as it adds up to 60% or more, you qualify for SNCS. I'm gonna show you guys this again um, on the VA's own website, Bradley versus Peak. Go read this. It will lay it out verbatim. It will tell you that the VA does not need to add all those disabilities together if you have one or two qualifying disabilities. That's all they needed. This is from a federal judge. I'm not making this up. This is on, on the VA's own website. You can Google Bradley versus Pete right now. You will see tons of court cases that come up explaining this. Take this back off. Okay, so it does not matter, guys. You got to go from wherever you got your 100, all right? Because, I, again, I don't know where you got your 100. I don't know what all they use to give you 100%. Anything outside of that, 100% or more, I'm sorry, 60% or more, you qualify for SMCS. And if you're already in the SMC category and you get an SMC, just say L, right? Whatever they use to give you L. You got anything outside of that, 50% or higher, you're supposed to go to L and a half. You got anything outside of that that's 100% or higher, you move into the next category, which is M. You see, civilians are not obligated to care about us. That's why you have to look out for yourself uh, when getting these benefits. Yes, because they're never going to take, how many of you all knew that? There's 33 people in here right now. How many of you all actually knew about SMCS and TDIU, or SMCS in general, whether you're TDIU or 100%. How many of you guys actually knew about that? I definitely didn't. <laughs> Let's see. So if you file, you risk a decrease once you file. Don't open. Back up your whole medical history. Hey, that's all. Look, I can't tell you what to do and not to do. I'm just telling you what the rules are. Because you're going to run a risk with anything. But like with most things, if you're disabled, you're disabled. For me, oh, I'm going to open it up. I ain't got nothing to hide. Hell, I've had my disability damn near 20 years. What are they going to do? And I just went to a CMP that confirmed what I just had. So what are they going to do? Try to take it away? Good luck. Talk to Mr. Mac, T-Mix. Uh, how can get a copy of an award letter? Okay, so you don't have your award letter? You can either go online, right, to, what is it, va.gov, Love and Freedom? Yeah, va.gov. But the thing is, they generate, you can generate a letter, but lately they haven't been showing what your letter going to say, the letter that they, the decision letter come. What you do is now, even if it's been, I'll say five to seven days and you call them and they tell you when it was issued, they will email it to you because they so far behind backlog right now. 
Okay, so they'll email you your award letter. Yes. Okay, there you go. But that's where you need to start first, okay? You need to start with where they granted you your award. What did they use to grant you your award? Start there first. And you were dead, you were dead on head when you used to say, read your award letter, it don't explain to you because that is so true. I went back and read some awards letter uh, recently and I was just out of curiosity. And I went back and read them and I'm like, if I would have read these letters from the beginning, I would have saved myself some headache because it basically say in your favor, we did do this, but you, you know, this, we didn't have this, or you should have did this, pretty much what they're telling you that if they don't have the proper forms or you didn't do it on the proper form or you, you've been diagnosed with it, but you filed for something else, then they basically telling you how to go back and refile. Correct. Pretty much. They give you a roadmap of what you need to do. Yeah, that is so true. I, I didn't even notice that until, you know. You take that roadmap and you use it. Whatever they sent you and say, okay, you didn't give us this, so we only gave you this because you didn't give us this form correctly. Okay, well, I'm going to fill this form out and I'm going to take my award, my denial letter along with that form and give you both. Now what you going to tell me? Because this is the reason why you said you denied it. So what, what can they do now if you correct it and you give them the denial, what can they do? They got to correct it at that point. Right, exactly. Because I found one, uh, just what just an example on one of my claims that I had uh, for the PTSD and stuff. I had filed for something else and they came back in a war letter and said, well, we see that you were diagnosed such and such a date time for this. So that's why we did I did because he's showing it his name link service connected but you were in your favor you were diagnosed with this and i'm like wow okay <laughs> so they basically were telling me just don't they're not going to approve that one because you hadn't had sometime you already been uh diagnosed or your conditions had already been found by a physician and you don't know it you, that's why you say get your c file and you go back because some people try to open up new claims that they haven't even went and seen, been seen by the doctor. Don't even have those. They trying to diagnose themselves because their friend have those issues. Correct. Dude, I'm telling you, your, your C file and your award letter is full of so much information for those of you trying to get to 100. For those of you that don't know what's in there, like, okay, well, what is the doctor really saying? What do they think I really have? You don't know unless you get your C file. You don't know what kind of conditions they awarded you unless you read your award letter. That's what that stuff is there for. Let's see, I got my 100% uh, PNC. Exactly. In my award letter, it mentions a mistake that was made during the approval process. I got SMC for ED, an extra $100 a month. Well, I'm great. I'm glad it worked out for you, but I wouldn't trust some people as far as I could throw them. Uh, let's see. I do. What's up, Mr. Thompson? Let's see. But I did. I did, but not the inside information. Okay. Like I said, dude, it's on the VA's own website. Uh, we used to talk about it in art clad. What is art clad? Let's see. Congratulations. Let's see. I knew about TDIU. I'm working on my TDIU now. Okay. Mr. McDonald, let's see. Uh, I heard the term SMC, but I didn't know about it uh, to this extent at all. I appreciate the information. No problem. I hear you. Talking to Gary. Uh, e benefits has award letters. Yeah, but I don't think they go into detail about uh, what they use to grant your disabilities. Do they love and freedom? No, they don't go. Yo, if you want your exact copy of your decision letter, or what, it has to be the way I just said. They're going to have to email it, the one that they hard copy they was going to mail to you. But in your award letter, it just state what you're entitled to. If you want to see if you won in that generating a letter will show you that you got an increase or you got decrease. It'll show you what your percentage is. It won't go into detail. Right. That's all it shows. 
Now, you guys got to be careful, too. And I learned this the hard way. When you do, like a lot of people scared to open, like you said, I ain't, I ain't scared to open my mind because I do have these conditions wrong with me. Uh, but you got to understand, of course, they're going to look back at some of your uh, things that you have been re awarded recently. And they trying to discourage people now because what they do, they give you an increase in one area and they will decrease another one that you had just got awarded. So that's oh, yeah. how they try to discourage. Yeah. Well, like I said, dude, for me personally, I can't I can't tell somebody else what to do. Don't, don't right. do what I do. Okay. Don't do what I do. But for me personally, you can open that motherfucker up 50 times. I don't care. I can care less. <laughs> I can care the hell less because they got almost 20 years. Exactly. Right. She looked at me. She's like, uh, man. <laughs> Damn. Bro, I don't care. Yeah. Look at it. Hell, it ain't nothing gonna change. What's gonna change? What, what? Exactly. Hell, like it's gonna magically get better overnight. What's gonna change? Nothing. Yeah. And I don't die those myself. <laughs> so. <laughs> but that's me. I'm not telling you guys what to do. If you're you know, cautious about, hey, I don't want to mess with them, then don't mess with them. But if you're asking me, open that motherfucker up. Look at it. Right. <laughs> I'll help you turn the pages. Look at it. Let's see. That's what they do. Discourage yeah. Them. Open well, why them. would you be scared if you're not any falsified information? Uh, But if you have nothing to hide, then pursue your claim. That's exactly what I do. I don't give a damn. Open this up. Uh, I'm talking to K Mac. Let's see. They added new disabilities uh, times two after 20 years. Okay, Mr. B, I'm showing you where it is on the VA's website. I'm giving you the name, which is uh, Bradley versus Pete. Just Google it. You don't have to take my word for it. I'm not telling anybody to just, oh, what's this man online said that. No. Go research this yourself and make sure you clearly understand what it's saying in simple terms. Not using anything that the VA has already awarded you. We're talking outside of what they already awarded you. If you got at least 60% or more outside of what they already awarded you, you qualify for SMCS. And there's no reason for you not to get SMCS. None whatsoever. I uh, remember you stating that before, but didn't understand. Okay. Let's see. Uh, you just did a CNP. Buck Travel. Let's see, Marquette, what's up? Can you explain the minimum 5K per month to live in Colombia? Could you explain the reasons behind it? Thanks. Uh, the reasons behind it are very simple. Uh, number one, cost of living is not just going up in the United States of America. It's going up here. Uh, case example, it used to be qualified $728. This year is now $900, minimum $900 to qualify to live here. The rent in everybody's apartment, including mine, has gone up. It's only gone up, I think, $40 for me, but it's going up. So when you come here with these minimal amounts, and it all of a sudden depends on your lifestyle, Right. I'm not coming to a country that's a developing country to live like a poor local. That's exactly what you're going to live on. If you come in here to live on twelve hundred or fifteen hundred dollars. Bobby D is going to be on tomorrow talking live. He just went through a tsunami where he was well, where he still is in the Philippines. I bet he can explain it a lot better than I can because I beat this horse to death. I've told you guys this a million one time. Especially these people with this twelve, fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars a month, that crap is going to end you. You're going to end up in the streets, homeless, broke, looking in the air, trying to figure out how you get yourself in this position. If you come with a small plan, you're always going to stay small. I go over and above anything that I need. Just because I save five grand, that doesn't mean I need to spend five grand. But if something ever goes wrong, if something ever comes up, I need to take care of. If I got to bounce. If I got to move into another place, I have the income to do it. Too many of you all think very small and you think nothing's never going to go wrong. Case in point, you move into an apartment that's $300 a month. 
you only get $1,500 a month. You spent your money for groceries. You spent the money for your bills. You only left with maybe four or $500. Something happens in your apartment. It gets flooded. There's a fire. Now you got to go stay somewhere else till your apartment gets fixed because you ain't got no insurance. You don't have the money to afford insurance. What do you do at that point? Where are you going to stay? You going to move into a hostel? What money you got to pay for clothes, to get new clothes, to get this, to get that? You don't when you only got $1,500. You ain't got nothing. You got nothing. You think small, you live small, you always going to be small. You got to put your sights a lot higher. To think you're going to come here and live like a local, you tripping. You fooling yourself. When you sleeping with the windows open and rain is coming in beating you in the face, because you want to be cheap, you'll figure it out. This ain't enough to live here. This ain't how I want to live, especially coming from the United States of America, where you can have nothing and live way better than maybe 40 percent of the people that's living here to where you're going to go. Not to mention the other the biggest part that people forgot. This was once the murder capital of the world. You think all those people, all those gangs, all those gorillas are gone, you're fooling yourself. They're right there in those barrios where people here tell you to stay out of. The next trip I go on, I'm going to talk to some of the people that live in these areas and let them explain to you why you should not be living in those areas because it's too dangerous for you. Way too dangerous. But you know, people from the hood, man, I'm from south of this, I'm from north of this, I'm from the west side. What does that mean to these people here? Nothing. Nothing. Just last week, and it was all over the paper here, dumbass American walking down here close to Manrique, knocked upside his damn head. He walking down the street bleeding. He in the paper like that, holding his head like this, handful of blood. Why? I'm from the south side. That shit don't mean nothing here. Nothing. And until you all wake up and realize that and stop thinking so cheap, because it ain't cheap to live here. Now, if you plan on living well, but if all you plan on doing is coming here chasing pre pagos and you want to live the bottom line that you can live, continue to do what y'all do. Talking to hey. Carrie Gary, I have an attorney. Okay, you guys talking to each other. See, I was told one disability must be 100 plus 60, not a group of disabilities plus 100. That's not true. That's not. I'm going to show you this again. Uh, go right here. US, the, the VA's own website. Okay? Read that. Put in Bradley versus Pete. That is not true. The courts deem that a combination of disabilities that add up for TDIU plus any disabilities outside of that that add up to 60% or more, you qualify for SMCS. That is the lie. See, in the, in the VA's manual, if you go there right now, that's what the VA book says, right? That you're supposed to have a single disability at 100 and then any others 60 or higher to qualify for SMCS. That was changed a long time ago with court rulings. If you Google Bradley versus Peak, there's a ton of court cases that are going to come up and show you that is not true. When writing a personal statement for sleep apnea, do you start with the current sleep issues if you have not diagnosed and service only as VA sleep study, or should you indicate, or should you include in service issues? Okay, uh, do I still have that video up where it talks about, uh, I don't know if I still had a video up. Okay, so you want to write a letter. So you just want to write basically correspondence explaining your service connection to sleep apnea, if I'm understanding that right. Okay, so yeah, you want to start with how did it start in service? If it was documented, if you have any witnesses, buddy statements, you want to get buddy statements. You want buddy statements to be in their own words. Do not copy and paste and then just write names on the bottom. No, it needs to be all in their own words. But if you're asking me how you, when you start writing it, how you want to write it, 
You want to start from where it first became a problem, which should be in service, and then bring it all the way forward to where you are now. And any witnesses that you have, make sure they write up that they witnessed it where you were, okay, where they were. Make sure the years are correct. Make sure the dates are correct, where you both were, where you were stationed. Um, get all that correct. Even if they got to give you a copy of their service record showing that you all were at the same location at the same time, you want to show them as much evidence as possible. Do not leave it up to them and be like, well, they should be able to figure it out. No, they're not going to figure it out. You make as much detail, lay it out as much as you can as possible because they're not going to figure it out. They're not. Give as much detailed information as you can. Uh, our class at VA, yes. Uh, I guys fly from North Carolina to Virginia twice a week, get to travel too. Why? Yeah, I used to drive from Yuma to San Diego twice a week. I was getting $220 every time I went. Plus, if I want to stay in a hotel overnight, okay. two nights, I got that too. Hey, Mark, I got a question for you. Maybe you can answer. I, didn't, I can answer. Somebody asked me a question about if you've been rated with multiple uh, mental health conditions and they determine your percentage and in your Man, you broke up on me. <laughs> when you come back, I'll I'll try to answer that. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, I will do this, okay? Okay, Gary, you're talking to Gary. Let's see. I was told you can't have five disabilities that equal 100%, then unrelated disabilities that equal to 60% to get SMCS. One disability, no, that's not true. That's not true. Okay, I'm, I'm going to give you my example, Mr. Chance. When I was awarded TDIU back in 2010, do you know how I got it? I got it all from my left leg. They have what's called muscle skeletal groups. Okay, Google it or go to the VA's website and type it in. Muscle skeletal groups, all right? And basically what that is is I'm going to use this arm. Okay, as my leg. I'm going to use this arm as my leg to explain this to you. All right. So you got the foot, the ankle, the knee, and the hip. All right. I was rated 20 for my foot, 30 for my ankle, 10 for my knee, 10 for my hip, and 40 overall. That's five different ratings, right? They combine all five because this is all one group. This right here is all one group. They combine all five because none of them, as you can see, are 100. None of them except one was 40%. But with all that combined, that was enough to give me TDIU under that rule. So everything that they told you right there is incorrect. I'm living proof of that. But you just got to know where to look. It's called muscle skeletal groups. If it's all in one group, that group can be used to grant you TDIU. That's how I got it in 2010. Anything that I got outside of this group that added up to 60% or more is how I got SMCS, which there were three more outside of this that had absolutely nothing to do with it. This is where you got to know the difference. People can tell you anything, but I'm going to show you. Okay? And I'm telling you where to go. Go to the VA's website. Type in muscular skeletal group. Matter of fact, let me pull it up. Because I want you guys to see what I'm saying. You can't go by what people's, oh, well, this is what they say. No, that's a bunch of BS. Muscle skeletal groups. Oh, it's just said Department of Veterans According Affairs. to Better Health Channel, generally speaking, skeletal muscle is grouped into opposing pairs such as the biceps and triceps on the front and back of the upper arm. Skeletal muscles are under our conscious Sorry, control, which is why they are also oh. known as voluntary I'm muscles. 
Uh, see. I got you, love and freedom. Let's see, veteran affairs. Yeah, y'all can't. Y'all got to stop going about what people say and tell them to actually show you. Uh, it's called paired muscle skeletal groups. This is from the VA's own website. You just got to know where to look. The difference is I know where to look. A lot of you guys don't know where to look. A lot of the stuff that y'all hear is just hearsay. They don't know the actual facts. I'm trying to tell you the websites to go to. I'm trying to give you the name of each one that you need to go to. Because just hearsay is just that, hearsay. You got to know where to look. You got to know where to look. All right, man, try that again. Try to explain that again. Hey, I'm sorry about that. I was in a bad area. You know how I get out here uh, real quick before I lose signal again. My question was, someone had asked me if you've been diagnosed with multiple uh, mental health conditions and they gave you a rating and on your awards letter uh, telling you how did they come up with that percentage they included uh, multiple of uh, disability mental health issues but they left off uh, one condition can you go back and file for an increase and add that one condition that they left out will it increase your uh, percentage on your mental health. Are they already a hundred? Uh, oh, you know what? I need max that. If they're already a hundred on mental health. That ain't gonna do that for them. Cause you can only get one rating in mental health. Right. If they're not a hundred, will it? If they rent it file, will it increase? Possibly. It depends on what it is. <laughs> That's gonna Perfect. depend on what it is. Because okay, I'll give you an example. Let's say I'm diagnosed with schizophrenia, uh, PTSD, and depression, right? Right. Normally what they do is they're going to give you the highest one in the group. So whatever it is that they have, unless it's something that they know is going to be higher than what they already are. So say like they're 50% for whatever it is they got right now, right? And they listed right. all these different mental health diagnoses. Unless the one that they left out it's going to give them 70 or 100 filing for that ain't going to do them no good okay yeah I'm fine. i and think they said know. that go ahead i'm sorry no go ahead i said well, like unless they know because the psychiatrist don't look you know you uh you might be somebody who might want to harm yourself or something like that and they say okay we're gonna move you up into this spot you know, you, you read where you would be in 70% instead of 50%. Then hell yeah, I would file. But if it's going to be at the same level you already at, that's a moot point. That's not going to do anything for you. Okay, yeah, because I, I, I think he said they left out one on his rating where it didn't put him in a percentage where it was suicidal ideation and they didn't, they didn't include that. Oh, no, that's like I said. Now, I don't know what his rating is. But if he ain't at least 70%, because suicide ideation puts him at least minimum 70 up to 100. I, I don't know all the particulars. I'm just telling you where suicidal ideation puts you. Minimum 70, right. possibly into 100. Right. So I don't know where he is to start with, but yeah, that's suicide ideation is serious. Yeah, I think you said they only gave him, if I'm not mistaken, I think you said they gave him for um uh, what was it depression anxiety uh what was the other insomnia and uh just what is it um uh, what's it uh move what's the disorder when you adjustment disorder oh, okay so they left out of suicidal ideation i guess oh yeah, that, that's totally different right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he may want to get on that. He or she may want to get on that. Okay. Yeah, that's all I, I wanted to run uh, that by you uh, before I lose signal again, man. I'm going to let you go ahead and uh, I'll jump in on the next one. Um, 
But I just wanted to chime in, man, see what's going on. See, I know I'm going to miss out on some good information. <laughs> but I, I, I was going to go back and watch the replay, but uh, I did catch some of it. And that was the one I wanted to hear about the, SM, the SMCs. Okay. Yeah, it's all good, man. It's all good. I all, right. all right, then, dog. All right. Later. Later. All right, so I'm getting ready to get off here, man. Mr. B, uh, you have to be 70% to get TDIU. Nope, 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 nope. I just explained to you guys. Now, I don't know if you wrote this before I explained that part about muscle skeletal groups, uh, but you need at least two ratings of 40% or higher that add up to a minimum of 70, or you need one at 60% or higher. That's how you qualify for TDIU. That's how, okay? Two, 40% or higher to add up to 70, or one is 60% or higher, or muscle skeletal groups. 85% uh, above, yeah, you, you may want to talk to somebody. Let's see. I was told not to dispute my rating, but pressed on resulting in a Q rating of SMC M and a half. If you meet the criteria, don't hesitate and file. Plus, do your own research like I did uh, and still do. Exactly. That's, that's all I'm saying. I'm not trying to tell you guys, run out there and go file. All this. No. I'm trying to tell you about it. I'm trying to tell you where to go look to find it for yourself, to research it for yourself. And no way am I telling you to run out there tomorrow to put a claim in for SMCS without doing some research yourself. I'm trying to show you guys where you can read it for yourself on the VA's own website. I'm trying to give you clear examples of how these things happen and how veterans who are entitled to even more don't even realize it. Okay? That's all I'm doing. I'm not telling anybody to just run out and file these things. Please do your research. Please understand what you're getting ready to file. So when they come at you with questions, you got to retort. You can answer right back. Look, this is where I am. These are the only things that you use. This is all the stuff I have outside of that. All of this qualifies for this. I should be getting paid for this. And that's all I'm telling you. Salute, Markel. Do you know anything about tested positive? Let me see. Do you know anyone that's tested positive and had to stay in Colombia or had delayed trips back to the U.S.? Yes. That's been, man, there's people all over the paper that's been stuck here for being tested positive, crying talking about they're going to lose their jobs and whatnot. That's on them. <laughs> you run the risk of coming here because COVID numbers here are through the roof. ICUs are packed. So you come in here, you come in at your own risk, at your own risk. You come in, you get stuck. I got no pity for you, and I ain't loaning nobody a dime. That's on you because you know the risk when you're coming, especially people who have jobs. They rather come here for prepays than worry about their job and their way of life. That's on you, bro. I have no pity for none of them. None of them. Uh, it's direct program. Anything someone seeking TDIU should be interested in. You gotta let me know what that is. I don't know what RAC. I don't know what that is. Uh, let's see. I got to have my black Angus tomahawk steaks. <laughs> All right, Mr. McDonald. Let's see, talking to Howard. What's up, Mr. Man? How you doing? Uh, the gold shop here in Bangkok getting hit hard like Fort Knox. The locals ain't playing anymore. Yeah, man, they had a robbery here. Looks like something straight out of a movie. Uh, Mr. Thompson, let's see. I live in Columbia and I agree that a 5,000 a month minimum. I don't spend 5K a month, but I can keep a good emergency fund. I keep trying to tell them they come in here with $1,200, $1,500. You people are out of your mind. I know locals here that live on way more than that. And they'll tell you. And I and I ask, them, matter of fact, I'm telling you, when I go on my next trip on Monday, I'm going to have, I'm going to ask them. Now, it's going to be in Spanish. I don't know if I'm going to translate all of it at the bottom, but get your Google Translator out because I'm going to ask them. And I guarantee you, not one person is going to tell you, you need to be living here on 1500 or 2000 now, what I'm going to tell you, all these barrios, a lot of these fools are in right now, that's somewhere you need to be staying. They're going to tell you, and I'm, I can guarantee you, they're going to tell you, you need to stay in either Poblado, Envigado, Sabaneta, Lorelis, 
or Etigui. Not one person is going to tell you you need to stay in Belize or they're going to tell you you need to stay in Bejo or any of those places. And they're going to tell you it's too dangerous to take your butt there. The brother's giving you some free game. You better take it. <laughs> they ain't got to take it. I see them on the street all the time here with signs. They ain't got to take it. No problem, Mr. Chance. Let's see. I've been looking at Panama. That looks a little better to me than Colombia. Uh, yeah, I mean, bro, I get questions on my other channel all the time about is Colombia dangerous? Uh, is it safe to come there? And I answer it the same way. It all depends on what you're coming for. Because if you're coming to check out the country, possibly meet a nice girl, you'll be fine. Because you're not in any of the areas where the prepays are, where the crooks are. Because people don't realize, man, not that long ago, this was the murder capital of the world. I don't think people remember that. The people come here, dude, they get so relaxed. You guys don't. This was the murder capital of the world. There are things that go on in this country that never get reported, that you only hear about. So it just depends. If you're coming here chasing pre pagos good luck to you. Good luck to you. That's all I tell you. Because, I, like I said, I got no pity for you. If you get caught up in a situation where they've stuck drugs on you and now you got to spend the rest of your life in prison because you've been set up, that's on you. You decide to come here to chase pre pagos That's your choice. Everybody can make their choice. If that's the choice you're going to make, that's your choice. But if you're going to come here, dude, and just chill out, find your nice girl, get your nice place to stay, knock on wood, you're going to be fine. Been living here for almost four years, dude. Knock on wood. Let me find some. Nothing here as well. Here's some. Knock on wood. Have not had one issue. Only issues I've ever had. Tourists and expats. Never had an issue with a local. Never. Never. I'm not in the parks. I'm not in Parque Yeris. I'm not in Gustos. I'm not in El Centro. I'm not in any of these bars. Don't need none of it. If you learn some Spanish, you learn how to talk to these people in their own language, you can do pretty much whatever you want. You can get pretty much whoever you want. But it's just some of you all just want to be lazy. You don't want to learn the language. You want to let your money talk for you. Well, sometimes that money talking for you is going to land you in more trouble than you expected. Yeah, love and freedoms in the States. Uh, hello, Markel. Thanks for the tip. I received my iPad from the VA today. Congratulations. What are the chances of going from 70% PTSD to TDIU? Pretty good, actually. Uh, they are pretty good. Uh, there's a lot of things when you get to 70% PTSD that's in language there that could prevent you from working again. So that's a pretty good chance there. Uh, let's see, you meet the qualifications, so apply if you can't work. Yeah. T-Mix, appreciate that. Let's see, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink it. <laughs> let's see. Uh, I'm like you as an age, I want the finer things, so I try to stay in the best areas whenever I travel. It's just statistically safer as well to stay in the best areas to minimize to minimize crime or anything else. You're absolutely right, bro. Okay, I come across aggressive, but let me just say this, man. Real talk. Wherever you go, I don't care what country you go to do. If you stay in the better areas, not saying it will never happen that you won't get robbed and nothing will happen to you, but there's a much smaller chance if something happens to you when you're in a better area. When I went to the Philippines, dude, the first time I went, I really didn't know anything about the country, okay? I ended up staying in Makati. I think it's called Makati, if I'm not mistaken. And I was originally supposed to stay in Manila, but when I saw the area, hell to the no. I went and found me another hotel somewhere else. And then I left where I was because it was too noisy and moved to BGC. BGC 
reminds me of a city in the States. It's like a condensed version of maybe New York City. That's how BGC is. It was full of expats and tourists, but it was a much more cleaner, nicer area. Everything was readily available that you need. No issues at all. None. Compared to when I was in the DR. See, I was in the DR. I normally keep two places in the DR. I would be on the Conde. I had one spot, and then I had another spot in Bay of Vista or Pantina. And every time I would stay in the Conde area, it was like, damn, dude, these people got noise. Water may not be working. This going on, that's going on. But whenever I was in the Pantini, nothing, nothing. Everything was chill. So it's not like I'm trying to like brag or boast about things, but how is absolutely right. The better the area, the less chance of something going wrong. And you got more people that are willing to help you as well as there are going to be more people in the area most of the time that can speak English if you can't speak the language. That's just a fact. Uh, yep, my dad was a cocaine cowboy. I didn't even know it until he got murked. Wow. Let's see, I went to Colombia one time and I didn't like it. Okay, Mr. Mack. <laughs> so I agree, almost uh, any country got to have more than 1,500 or 2,000. We got to strive for better and learn a skill or business to come up on the income, not to mention rising inflation costs. I'm telling you, dude, worldwide here, man, you should hear people here complain about food, about taxes, about rent. The higher stuff goes up here, the further people are moving out. They're going to damn near be two hours outside the city, man, in some of these areas because they can't afford it. And in the ones they can't afford, I don't think you guys realize where some of these people come from when they come in, when y'all see them. When they, some of these girls that go to the park or some of these people y'all see walking on the street, I don't think y'all realize where they come from, bro. If y'all see some of the conditions from where some of these people come from, you understand why they do what they do. Real talk. Bro, I went to this one area. They got houses on top of houses going in every direction. Literally, this person's house here can touch this person's house over here. And then there's two more houses in between that. And then they're stacked. They just keep going up. Some have windows, some don't. Some just got a curtain blocking. That's it. Rain, wind, all that's coming right in the house. Right into the house. I, I just don't think, man, y'all realize the gangs that are here. The gangs that are still controlling some of these barrios. And then you all go walking up in there like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm such and such. They don't give a damn who you are. You in their neighborhood. They ain't in the States. You in their neighborhoods. But again, people come here, dude, and they learn the hard way. Unfortunately, they learn the hard way. You guys got to wake up, man, and stop thinking so cheap. This ain't the States. This ain't the hood in the States where they're going to give you a free government house if stuff goes wrong. Here ain't nobody helping you but yourself. You all you got. That's it. That is it. Unless you have made a ton of Colombian friends here, ain't nobody going to help you. Not like they will in the States. Nobody. And traveling on nothing, living here on nothing, ain't going to get it, man. In none of these countries, you're a gringo. You're coming from a rich country. People look at you and expect you to have it. And you come in there and you stand in the same area they're living in. They're looking at you like, what, what are you doing here? That's, that's the thing I don't get with some of you guys. Let's see, if you don't want to learn the language and customs, a uh, courtesy in their country, stay home. Exactly. Uh, minimize contact, minimize conflict. You get no arguments with me on now. <laughs> Let's see, I was there on a business trip in 99. I was scared when I got off the plane. I mean, it really depends on what area you're going in because it can be intimidating in some areas here. Uh, especially if you're not familiar with anybody in those areas. Some of y'all just jump on the metro. Some of y'all just jump on a bus and just go wherever the bus ends. Y'all crazy. 
I'm telling you, you need to look up the history of this country before you bring your butt here and think you just gonna go out and go on an adventure. There are still some areas here, bro, you're not even allowed in. The police won't even go in. And some of y'all come here, dude, thinking that y'all gonna just walk into these areas like it's nothing. Okay. Good evening, brothers and fatigue. What's up, Mr. Miles? Uh, VA 55 rule. Y'all got a video on that already, Mr. Taylor. Let's see. It's not where you're from. It's where you at. Exactly. You have to uh, to let them go and find out. From, yeah, they're going to find out <laughs> the hard way. Uh, I see a lot of them in Europe and U.S. and Canada. They go running into trouble if emergency occurs. Ain't nowhere to run here, especially if you ain't got no money. Ain't nowhere to go. Uh, you know Mike Hines from Panama. Nope. Nope. No, I don't. Uh, Columbia, Florida in the 80s were terrible. Oh, I'm sure it was. Uh, they have to go find themselves and find out the hard way. They're going, that's, that's the thing, Mr. McDonald. Like, when I see him here, uh, that was a soldier. Well, it was a guy who recently got out. I saw him at the HCA, bro. He walking around <laughs> just everywhere. And I'm like, dude, You've been lucky as hell so far, man. One of these nights, somebody going to see you because they're going to want something. They're going to want your phone. They're going to want something. And they're just going to take it. And what can you do? What can you do? You walk in the streets alone in a foreign country, and he don't even speak Spanish. I'm like, what you going to do if there's a gang of people that roll up on you? What you going to do at that point? Ain't nothing you can do but give up everything you got and hope they, that you can leave alive. That's all you can do. I just don't understand why people take risks like that. You see them here, dude, even at night. Here at night, most of the time, the police is going to stop you and ask you what you're doing. Because they don't see people out here walking around like that at night. The locals are not even out here walking around like that at night. It's usually only tourists. And it's like, what are you all looking for? One, two o'clock in the morning, walking around here in the middle of the night. Only reason I know this dude is because sometimes I can't sleep. I'll just go downstairs, sit outside where the waterfall is, and just chill. And I'll hear the guards asking me, like, is it normal for gringos to be walking around one, two o'clock in the morning? I'll be like, I don't know what the hell these folks are doing. But that's what some do when they come in, Mr. McDonald. They, one, two o'clock in the morning, they got walking around in the street. See, I met a cat from the state of Medellin. Uh, I told him it's dangerous. One said he's not from the hood and he knows how to move around. I like, yeah, that hood, man. <laughs> Those words right there have caused more conflict than anything. I know how to move. It's like, okay, you know how to move in the States. You don't know how to move here, especially when you don't speak the language. That's one of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard. People who say that, here's another thing y'all need to realize. People who say that live in areas probably that are crappy, and the people that live in the area know that they ain't got nothing. That's why nobody's bothering. Bro, if you look like you come out of a hole, or you look like you come off a boat, and you walking around in the neighborhood, crappy clothes on, looking like you hadn't shaved in months, they know you ain't got nothing. <laughs> They're not going to bother you at that point. They know you got nothing. So when they sit there telling you, well, I know how to move. Yeah, right? And the girls know it. Think about it. These fools come here to get a prepaid, right? And they talk like they balling. They must realize that girl has been in some of the best that they have to offer in this city. She come to your rundown dump and you sitting there lying about all this stuff. She, she already know you're lying. Everybody know you're lying. <laughs> Hard head leads to a saw man. You're right. And if they go to the clock tower, uh, it cut, don't city. It cut, don't city. I don't know what that means, Mr. McDonald. I've never been to uh, Cartagena. I don't plan on going because there's too many Americans there. Anywhere game America, I'm not going. I had the same stance with Sassoul. I went one time. No, twice. Never going there again. Never. I have no reason to ever step foot in Sassoul. Uh, have you? How would you compare Latin countries versus Asian countries? Latin countries, to me, uh, seem more aggressive. Well, okay. 
Now, if you're talking about as far as what exactly, because if you're talking about as far as females go, oh yeah, Latin women are very, way more, Asian women are standoffish, they're quiet, they're shy, at least the ones I've seen in the Philippines. Here, oh no, girls here ain't shy at all. <laughs> if they like you, they coming to you. Or they gonna talk to you. And if you don't know how to speak the language, they got the patience to sit there and go back and forth with the translator. So yeah, but as far as what exactly, I mean, as far as living, I mean, I didn't spend as much time in the Philippines uh, as I have in like the DR, Costa Rica, Mexico, and here. I, I haven't spent that much time there. So uh, Bobby D would be a good one to ask about culture tomorrow. Uh, but from what I saw from the times that I was there, they're more laid back, I would say, than here. Here it can get, um, I don't want to say aggressive. I don't think that's a good word. Um, it could be more active. I put it that way. It could be more active here than I've seen in other places. But that's just Latin America altogether. Latin America, dude, is to me, if I had to put it in a nutshell, holidays, partying, and people just living. You know, they don't worry about, I don't have enough to get this. They take what they have and they live with what they have. They live within their means a lot of time. You know, one of the things that I hate when I go out with a lot of friends, everything costs too much. You know, something may be 50 cent to me. Oh, no, that's too much. <laughs> everything is, that's too much. We're not going to pay that. That's too much. I'm like, <laughs> that's the only thing I don't like. Um, you know, it depends on where they're from and, and how they do things. Uh, sometimes it works in your favor. If you're going to a tourist area, they know what stuff costs. They know this little chicklet here that they try to sell me 10,000 pesos. They're like, what? Man, you don't get out of here. <laughs> stuff like that. Cool. But well, sometimes dude, it gets old. Everything is too expensive. Let's see. They go to the clock tower. They are in big trouble. Oh, okay. Yeah, like I said, I've never been to Cartagena. I don't plan on going. Uh, I was working at the embassy in Bogota. Okay, now Bogota, dude, I've been there a couple times. Uh, they got areas in Bogota, dude. Yeah, they tell you right out the rip. Don't go here. Don't go there. <laughs> Stay over in this area over here. Uh, no, I skipped one. Let's see. I lived abroad 10 years in Asia. The only problem I had was with America. I'm telling y'all, dude. The issue ain't with the locals, Americans. Man, you got Americans that will screw you faster than any local will. Last time I was in Colombia, it did seem more dangerous. I was getting scanned up and down. They were checking to see how much money I had or it was something expensive. Oh, I'm telling you, dude. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> Let's see. They can tell the difference between us and Africa. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can point us out. Let's see, which could mean a good or a bad thing. That's the thing, but you can point us out anywhere. Mannerisms. I People kill me when they tell me, oh, man, I look like them. I dress like them. That don't mean nothing. Your mannerisms going to give you away every time, especially when you go to do just crossing the street. They know the difference. You make, you make a purchase in a store. They know the difference. Okay. It ain't just about your mouth and what you say. The way you outside carrying yourself, your mannerisms, that's a gringo. They know off the rip. Off the bat, you're a gringo. Because most people don't even pay attention to how Colombians buy things. The way they, they, most of them don't even carry ID. You don't hardly ever see them with a wallet, none of that. Driver's license, they leave in the glove box in the car. Everything they pay for, the money's on the right side. They ask them for uh, their cellular number for points. They just memorize and give them the number. Most don't even take the ID out of their house because they don't want to go down and have to buy a new one. So they don't use it. They just walk around. They ask for the number. They give them their ID number. They get their points and they leave. So you come, you're going to pay with a debit card or you're going to have cash or you're going to pull out this wallet. They don't do none of that. None of that. Most of y'all don't pay attention to nothing that they do here. I'm telling y'all, they, they can pick, I can pick you up. 
I've been here long enough now. I can spot them walking in American. Because most of y'all don't pay attention when couples are walking down the street. Who's on the right? Who's on the left? And going in which direction? Most people don't pay that no attention. You see it all here and you start to pick up on it. Okay. Okay. Or the way that women hold each other's hands or how they hold each other's hands. You can tell if it's mother or daughter or if it's friends. You can tell. If you're here long enough, you can tell. Most Mac don't pay that no attention because they're too busy looking up their ass to pay anything else, anything attention. Uh, I just generally dress down though, wear solid colors, right? <laughs> uh, dress down to dark colors, dark shoes, jeans. Man, I don't even care no more. I used to ban just not take anything. Take, I used to take all this off when I go in these barrios. Now I go in there so much to pick up different people or go see people. Like where I went to pick up Ashley, man. That night at night, I wouldn't no. <laughs> she needs something at night. I'm like, no, nah, dog, you have to take a taxi and come on up out of there. I would never go in there at night. Never. Never. But during the day. I go in there during the day because it's pretty chill during the day. But at night, mm-mm, mm-mm. Yes, I walk, demeanor. Oh, you can tell immediately. Immediately. We're loud, especially when we're in group. That's why I do solo dolo. Don't want to deal with Yeah. Like I told you, I mean, I hear them walking right here. Just, you hear it all. You hear it all. Uh, I was talking about the culture. When I was in Latin countries, I always felt like anything can pop off. Asia just seemed more relaxed too. Uh, no, I mean most of the places that I've been, dude, it's been it's been pretty relaxed. Um, you see, you feel like things about to pop off. <laughs> Where are you hanging out at, bro? <laughs> you feel like things about to pop off. Like, like here where I am in this building, dude, um, there's a ton of Colombians in here, and there are some foreigners. Most of the foreigners in this building are Europeans. Uh, and there's only maybe, you know, this building, 28 floors. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six apartments on each floor. As far as percentages go of Colombians versus foreigners, I say it's probably a 2080 split locals, foreigners in this building. And most of the people here, dude, they work all the time. This floor, dude, during the middle of the week, ain't nobody on this floor but me. Everybody else on this floor works. Everybody. Uh, that's the way most of this building is. When I go up on the roof, you guys see me go up on the roof doing videos. Who's up on the roof with me most of the time? Nobody. Because damn near everybody in this building is gone. They go to work. Um, now on the weekends, oh, it's loaded up there on the pool, but during the week, ain't nobody out there. If I go downstairs, noon, one, two o'clock, ain't nobody down there. That's why I say it just depends on where you are with a lot of these situations. But as far as answering your question, I just say it's more exciting in Latin America to me than it is in Asian countries, the ones that I've been to, which is mainly the Philippines. Um, and there it just seems more a little more standoffish. It's more shy. It's more, I started to say, well, but that's not the word I'm looking for. It's just more at a distance. I, I think people just keep their distance more in countries like that than here. Uh, you're pretty much a local now, Mark. You pretty much got a pass. <laughs> I'm telling you, dude, my first year here, I used to walk around my Movado, and then somebody stopped and asked me, is that a Movado watch? And I went, damn, they know what that is? Let me stop wearing that. And then I started wearing one of my cheaper watches. And then after a while, dude, you're like, you know what? Screw it. Fuck it. I got insurance. Screw it. So now I just take whatever, bro. Just walk on up in there, whatever. But the one time I did go to a girl's birthday party and I made that video and I switched up phones, man, it was rough over there. It was rough. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, it was rough over there. Well, she had a birthday party. Now, what that's fine with who said something might pop up, something could have popped off there. 
at that spot when she had her birthday party. I'm like, yeah, I ain't coming back to this one next year. Cause the whole while I'm like just checking things out. Cause it that situation I had never been in, dude, where there's just people constantly running in and out, running in and out. Like, what kind of restaurant is this? Just constantly people coming in and out. They talk to each other for a minute. They like exchange stuff and then they back out the door. And I'm like, yeah, this 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 ain't for me. Uh, do you plan on going back to Santo Domingo anytime? Probably not. Not not anytime soon. No, sir. No, no. Uh, knees, feet, and hand bilateral, lower back, SMC. Uh, so you got knees, feet, and hand bilateral, and your lower back for SMC. Okay. Man, let me get off here. I wasn't supposed to be on here no more than 20 minutes, an hour and 20 minutes now. Now, any other questions you guys have, other than the ones I already answered, please leave comments below. But be sure you guys tune in tomorrow for Bobby D. Um, we're going to cover a lot of stuff, especially when it comes to income, because you guys only look at income. I'm sorry, y'all. You guys only look at situations when they're going good. What happens if something goes wrong? Like when you're living here, like living here, I got a generator here. I got one. I got a Yeti, a Go Zero Yeti. Now it's only 150 watts. I should have got the 300 watt, but it's only 150 watts. But there's really nothing in here I need to power for that long. But most people don't think like that. Something goes wrong, power goes out. Okay. Everybody else sitting in the dark, I'm gonna plug in my Yeti. I got lights. Okay. I keep stuff charged for emergencies. I never know what's going to pop off and what's going to happen. The same when I go on a trip in that car, they don't really carry none extra. Man, you know, I got a flat tire kit. <laughs> I got a flashlight. I got some cones. I mean, I got those, uh, what do you call those red lights for those cones you can stick out? I bring all that. And it ain't even my car. Because I don't know what's going to happen, dude. Some of these trips we go on, they're an hour, two hour drive away. We may be out in the middle of nowhere. I'm not going to be out there with something. And I always take battery packs with me to charge up the phones or whatever else I got. I'm always thinking like that, dude. Something goes wrong, how you going to handle it? You get stuck out in the middle of trees. You hadn't paid attention to any direction that you left in or how you got to that spot. Uh -uh, uh -uh. No, nah, I'm always paying attention. I'm always looking around. And I'm always preparing if something goes wrong. And I guarantee you, Bobby D gonna tell you the same thing because he got caught flat-footed when that storm came through because he had never been through it before. Now, I guarantee you, he's gonna have solar power in his house. He's gonna have backup water because he's been through it. So I'm telling you guys, man, those are the things people never think about. They only think about when it's going good. What happens when it goes bad? Something goes wrong. How you gonna handle it? That's why I tell y'all, five grand or less, I'm not, mm -mm. Asian countries, 7,500 or less, no less than 7,500. Not going to Philippines without 7,500 a month. Not going to Europe without 7,500 a month. Not going to happen. Waste of time. For me, waste of time. What teams are you picking for the Super Bowl? Bro, I was rolling with San Francisco, especially when they beat Dallas. I got a feeling San Francisco is going to beat the Rams. I don't know why. It just seems like Shanahan has McVay's number. Uh, but I think it's going to be Kansas City and the 49ers. And I think uh, 49ers are going to edge it out again over San Francisco. We're going to have the same Super Bowl we had, what, two years ago? That's what I think it's going to be. Kansas City and the 49ers again. Uh, I think uh, – Cincinnati going to make it a close game, but Kansas City at home is tough to beat. Um, they're already hyped up from all the talk in that last game. So I got Kansas City and the 49ers, and I got Kansas City winning it all. All right, Mr. Brown, catch you on the next one. All right, guys, that's going to do it, man. I appreciate everybody watching as always. And until the next time, guys, I am out of here. Enjoy your night. I'll see you tomorrow with my man, Bobby D. Peace.